This is Precision TV. My name is Desiree and uh, of course I'm here with my friend Jado. How are you, man? I'm pretty good. How are you doing, Desiree? <laughs> I am good. I am good. Today is uh, another topic about uh, immigration. Exactly. As promised, now mm -hmm. today is our third episode. Mm -hmm. I yeah. will say third episode because last time we uh, described step by step about the uh, uh, green card holder, uh, I mean the DV lottery uh, program. Yeah. That was one of the ways to get into the US mm -hmm. or in the in 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 United States of America. Uh -huh. yeah. So the, another way to get here, you can get here just because you are a refugee. This is what we are going to dig deeper and see exactly what type of refugee how do you get here all those steps that they took all the way to here yeah. uh, that, that's what we are going to see and discuss together of course yeah. mm -hmm. Jado, uh, let, let's go ahead and see uh, can you tell me uh, uh, anyway I think I have it here uh, maybe people who are listening right now they can really um, probably want to know who is a refugee basically a refugee uh, basically, uh, a refugee or a person uh, seeking for a refugee uh, resettlement is a person um, already uh, uh, fleeing a very like uh, conflicted uh, place or in a, uh, in the process of uh, seeking, let's say, a safety in a different place or trying to mm -hmm. flee away <laughs> from a some life difficulties let's say yeah yeah basically in short word you can say it's a person forced to flee their home country to escape a war or a violence or any uh perception so uh that's uh, that's a refugee basically if you're a refugee uh the u.s or any other country might take you uh for uh give you a new home so uh, this is one of the uh criterias that all the country might work together with uh unhcr to make sure they're taking the qualified refugee because uh, at, at the end of the day all the refugees are not on the same level because they start with the uh, with those with the uh, uh, the victim the vulnerability so you trying to say you need to first become a refugee before you get to the US oh uh, yeah that, since that's the topic for today yeah uh, another way of getting here uh as if uh, when you are a refugee, you are very like uh, qualified to come here. But within that uh, a part, you need also to be uh, qualified for certain things because uh, they can't take all the refugees around yeah. the world to yeah. come yeah. and live in the U.S. Exactly. So um, I, 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 am, I, have, I don't have like a very concrete uh, backing information to this question I'm going to raise for mm -hmm. you. Um, I hear that... Uh, depending on the uh, this, uh, the refugee uh, settlement or resettlement back in those countries, let's say like very endangering countries, mm -hmm. uh, there are phases of uh, taking refugees to the U.S. or mm -hmm. to the foreign or Western countries. I, th I think like every refugee has a time that, you know, his yeah, or yeah, her yeah. scheduled to move away is that true or you just have to be meeting very specific criteria to be uh, so yeah yeah Let, let's uh, since we are talking about us probably we, we see in general uh in general way after we describe uh, specifically here in the us but the us system it has i uh, would say five steps the first thing that you have to know about a refugee mm -hmm. resettlement here in the us number one you need to uh to apply for resettlement themselves so they are now the one who do that. UNHCR mm -hmm. identify the vulnerable cases yep. to be considered for the resettlement. Of course, because they, they are monitoring every refugee yeah, because, case by case. Mm -hmm, because they know they are the one who knows them daily, yeah. uh, life. So another thing, number two, the resettlement uh, is for the most vulnerable refugees, not everybody. Of course, they tend to say, hey, uh, 
you need to apply for a settlement maybe they receive your application uh on this point uh, how does the process of application just go through is it like a formality or is it a application conducted online how does it go uh basically uh here un uh hcr is the one who we apply for you they we identify uh refugees the vulnerable cases or refugees to be considered for resettlement oh, I got it so i think right there we will see which kind of uh, vulnerable refugee they do take all right on guys the, on another um, step. i think people who are listening right now should be taking notes that's the first step if you consider yourself in this kind of group trying to come over yeah ba- i think ba- this one is already done maybe who mm-hmm, knows yeah mm-hmm. basically you have to know that number two uh we be the resettlement if for uh the most vulnerable refugee we saw we we just talked about that all refugees who are uh, referred uh must fit at least one vulnerability category uh for or some of which they include medical needs that's number one mm-hmm. probably a refugee who need to get a uh, treatment yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, let's in, say, uh, in uh, u.s critical tension or yeah. yes yes let's say uh, in in your country let's say in iraq or congo or rwanda yeah. or anywhere in yeah. uh, they don't have like a, a a good physician a good doctor who can treat that uh, uh problem so that yeah, that's maybe accessing uh medical uh mm-hmm. inst- institutions will be very difficult you know maybe no, be no, subject to the yeah not only that uh, mm. sometime many cases it's when it's critical they need a special doctors okay. so that way okay. you are qualified another thing if you are a woman or a girl who is on uh, at, at risk like probably there is a violence going on that way uh, there is something that uh, they have to take it serious another thing ch- uh, children at sick or maybe a child is in a bad condition okay and th- so it's that no. is simply children at risk mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. another one it's a survivors of violence and torture oh okay that's very critical that's very <laughs> critical that's a uh, uh, number two on the list for the u.s so we are talking about yeah, u.s a, yeah, to, to the exact to accept you or to accept the, um, that application mm-hmm. but the application is made by unhcr on behalf of a refugee who is vulnerable because of that reasons four reasons that we just said and then number three we have countries uh, decide which refugees to admit for resettlement in this case we are not even talking about only us <laughs> yeah so now every country has to like you know feel like hey this person you're trying to bring us what his status like you know it's like a background check for, in other words right no 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 here uh, it's like you are sending application to different countries oh okay un h sierra take those applica- uh, application and send everywhere let's say us so, france uh not to cut you short can, can my application be uh, transferred or delivered to different countries yes absolutely okay. that's how it works and then later on that's when the country will be like oh you know what we pick this this case we pick this case and then they send over to unhcr again and then they are the one who going to be like oh you you've been selected by you we go let's say in netherlands mm-hmm. maybe in the us maybe in france maybe whatever case might be so those are the uh, that that's the thing number three where the country have to decide which refugees to admit for their resettlement got it right so what's mm-hmm. the step number four number four a person who have committed serious crime or who might pose a security threat are not eligible for a refugee status uh, or resettlement. If you know that, yeah. you've been in a war, <laughs> you've been uh, probably doing something uh, bad, uh, so, maybe you are, you had done some crime, uh, humanity crime, mm-hmm. uh, you are not qualified. Okay, so I think uh, this, this is for like, you know, high top ranking uh, individuals, probably like, you know, high ranking political participants mm-hmm. normally mm-hmm. who flee to the oppo- like opposition countries to where they are fleeing from because i think this one is like let's say why would like a president let's say from uh 
prisoner from Ukraine, instead of freeing to the, to the U.S., he frees to La- to Russia. You know, like the former president of Ukraine. That's what I, happened. I think so that, that is would this be the same case. Or no, no, that, I think we're gonna see that case. Yeah. That will be another case. That will be Because a political. This person is a threat, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so basic, basically, uh, his it, this case and the political case are very different. Oh, okay. And not this only, is for civilians. Yeah, these okay. these are uh, refugee who are fleeing their home because of war, or maybe because of. Of violence going on, or maybe he's fleeing because someone want to kill him because of some reason. You mean civil conflicts? Because I think they are induced by political uncertainties. That's what I think. Yeah, but you, you, you are going to have these two mm. on different plate. They are, oh, okay. they are gonna be both refugees once they got here, but the system of bringing them here, mm-hmm. it's different. The system that we are talking here. A refugee is paid. Everything is paid all mm. the way to get here. He's not okay. going to pay anything because he doesn't have money. <laughs> But the other person who is fleeing the con- a political guy, mm. he already have money. These wow. people ha- have money, guy. Yeah. yeah. So that that's a that's a different. So the th- the number number five, a refugee resettlement saves lives. This is that sounds uh, like a compliment. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That saves lives because if if you are dying over there where yeah. you are in your country in a refugee camp or somewhere where you are not safe, you need the rescue. You yeah, need the that's rescue, true, man. Yeah, you that's need true. you need someone to uh, rescue you. So that's a, that's a, something that people need to know first of. Before, before so before even we go to uh, uh, other states would you allow uh, like our listeners that we now we have just spoken about um uh refugees uh getting resettled in the US the process but yeah that's the whole process until they get to the country but once we hit to the country now we're going to go with uh, hand in hand with a uh, uh, refugee no i think we 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 are we as, are as not we, as well we are not in the country the yet Yeah, I mean these these are the processes of uh-huh. getting to the country. That's right. Yeah, just reminding our listeners that mm-hmm. when we hit the country, may go hand in hand with asylum seekers. Asylum seekers with. Oh this, yeah, uh, once yeah. once refugee uh, arrive in US uh, for uh, let's say for instance this uh, case that we are talking uh, specifically, these are the refugee who been uh, outside of their home country specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, with these specific uh cases uh now the US resettlement process it's going to take place now yeah. now US agree like okay jado we agree that this case is coming we are good we are good to go mm-hmm. but we they need to know who this guy is So, um, if, even if you are uh, you are qualified because because of the uh, full uh, criteria that I mentioned uh, over there above, mm-hmm. yeah. they need to still know exactly who you are. Yeah, they have to dig deep about the personal information. There so, you go. Uh, I would just want to come up with a, a certain questions here. Um, you uh, you already know about these five steps right you mm-hmm. want to apply once you're still in the camps right where you need to just like make processes mm-hmm. to leave the camps and maybe f- uh, fly somewhere else so how long do you think it take uh, from the time you hit the camp and then the time you take off from that camp so after your application the, there is no specific time mm-hmm. because it's all about how uh, the communication is between US and UNHCR. Yeah. And also number three, a refugee need to be ready too. Mm-hmm. If they are coming and they're looking for you and you are not there, then that means you are you you you, you are I mean you are making your case to to too be long. in a pending. Yeah, it's it's taking it? too longer. Yeah, it's, much, it's much gonna, more longer on mm-hmm. a waiting list or pending process. And this process, it's not only for those refugees uh, living in the refugee camp. No. Mm. Uh, we have other refugees living in a uh, city. Yeah. Those refugees are also qualified because maybe they live in a city because 
they are af- afraid of someone who want to kill them. Yeah. Maybe so they're there maybe for a reason. They'll be vulnerable in the camps where uh-huh. like there's, uh, you know, similar exactly. identifications and exactly. people know where they're concentrated at. Mm-hmm. Okay. So those are the case that goes hand to hand. Mm-hmm. So, uh, okay. So once uh, a country decide which cases they are going to take, yeah. the, the next step is to know exactly who are there those people do, yeah. do do we really know these people so that's when we start with uh or something that they call the uh the UN um uh the UNHCR refers refugees to be considered for resettlement and provide background information exactly so what are the basic informations required before you hear the application Uh, when you say application, do you mean? I mean the re- uh, the the the, the uh, these uh, refugee resettlement. I think it's a form of application. Mm-hmm. Uh, this application basically it's not even done by uh, a person or a refugee. No, this this is uh, a process done or application done by UNHCR. Yes, uh, yeah, you clarified you clarified on that. But mm-hmm. what do they feel for like a refugee person information? What what a refugee needs so that mm-hmm. they can get like the kickstart on the application? So when it comes to background and probably let's say your case or your name was on a list yeah. of those people who might be qualified to live somewhere else then the process would be uh interviews like uh, uh the number one it would be like getting information from you yeah the UNHCR has offices that we come and then start uh, asking you questions names family do they, members do they need do they need the the, the proof of the information you're giving them Uh, no, they already have you in their system. Mm-hmm. So they they don't really gonna ask you too much because they know which type of identification you normally uh, have on you. Unless it's uh, maybe a new case mm-hmm. uh, that you are bringing which is gonna add to the existing case. But uh, beside that, they already have you they are already so have you i think system. it sounds like they collect information maybe before you enter the refugee camp no 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 it's mm. it doesn't work like that any refugee fleeing his country once the any uh, once the unhcr arrive of course they're gonna ask you okay where are you coming from yeah let's say Let, let's say there is a, a refugee, a, a transit refugee camp exactly. somewhere. You are fleeing yeah. from Congo to Rwanda or from Iraq to or a neighbor country or anywhere you might yeah, be fleeing. Someone will be there collecting so, information, so, your name, yeah, your age, the, your family. You, there yeah. you go. Mm-hmm. The office of the UNHCR, he will be there before they admit you in that specific location mm-hmm. they'll be like oh Jado, where, where are you coming from where were you born how many people are you guys so that they can know exactly how many of you to provide even food yeah. because they're gonna give you a card to make sure that uh, you have uh, all the things that you need mm-hmm. so th- those information they are the ones that normally they're asking names where were you born how many kids That's it. That, that's a basic information. Exactly. Now, I think like people listening to us have got the clues and the information to what's going on. It's just like you just stay there and you wait until you're called upon about the process because yes, now you're yes. not the one taking taking mm-hmm. care of your process. Oh, basically, the yeah. The <laughs> and the countries. Basically, you don't have a yeah. control on this. Yeah. So, this um, <laughs> would you please just maybe, are there some obstacles that uh, refugees face in this process? Uh, no, basically, once you hit all the information, uh, w- once you are ready to go, you ha- they have all information, they have taken your fingerprint. Uh, the other thing will be like uh, uh, the interviews. The yeah. interviews, uh, UNHCR, uh, we send all those proof and fingerprints. Then U.S. government, we send their officers. Yeah. in that country mm-hmm. to do their own interviews. Uh, interviews. Yeah. They're not going to just let them come. Mm-hmm. So they send them, the U.S. government agencies come and then they do something they call security database to yeah. make sure, okay, why do you, are you sure you want to leave? Yeah. 
Yeah. You don't you don't want to go back to your country? Are mm-hmm. you sure you want to go to US? Like you have to swear. Like yeah. this is serious. They they have to send an officer to ask you physically. And then mm-hmm. you have to agree that yes, all the information is correct. Oh, I'm not going back home. Yeah, I have made my decision to live in the US. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So um if let's say is there any point if you let's say you're a family of four or five mm-hmm. where like you guys you're like two of you are granted uh, a refugee in the US, they fly and then they you leave the three of your family yeah, behind? Yeah, basically yeah, that's So <laughs> what's the cause of that and what's the cases like? So uh for instance if you are over uh 18 uh you are enough uh, I mean you are mature enough to have your own case yeah. that's a, a one case that might be uh if you have your own case and um they can separate you from uh, someone else who's still dealing with something else that, okay. uh, and let's say maybe uh, there's a, a lot of cases where uh, a family member, let's say a mother and a father, they might come before you guys, like a 21-year-old boy and uh, his yeah. sister. Yeah. They stay because probably the agency, mm-hmm. the main reason is because of probably uh, the agency who's going to help them to get resettled here in the U.S., they are not able to take four people at the same time. Okay. Maybe they have all the apartment only for two people. In so, that case, they're going to only allow two people to come. So they'll first come, then they leave you behind. They leave you behind. <laughs> but in few days, you you are most likely to go in next month or a few weeks. Okay, after you that. better have high hope because yeah, this yeah, will haunt yeah. you at some point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. So um, now, uh, let's say this is the process of getting to the U.S., from all those we have said above and uh, what happens uh, just when you're told hey I think this is the given date you're going to fly to the US bro that's a, that's a good <laughs> thing I think everybody would be happy huh? yeah. so in the, in the approval uh, the state department assigned the case to one of uh, nine um, I think in the U.S. there are nine NGOs that help refugees to come in uh, in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So they are the ones who they're going to be like, okay, these are the number of people that we are taking in that specific country. And then they're going to be like, okay, we are ready for certain families. Okay. Then they say, okay, they send to you an HCR to that specific location. Then they're coming to you. They have to print out the list and be like, okay, this family are leaving maybe next two months because Mm -hmm. before you go there, uh, there is another process that you have to do. Uh, It's called medical checkup. Medical checkups. Yes. Mm -hmm. So once you have a date, before you have that specific date, you need to have already so, uh, done your Just to clarify, checkup. we're talking about the date of flying and the date for your medical checkups? Uh, the medical checkup comes before because the UNHCR have been informed that those cases are ready to go. They have people in the U.S. who are ready for them. Mm-hmm. Then they're going to come and tell them, I mean, tell uh, take them to the uh, clinic for the medical checkup. Okay, so in other words, just like when you're announced, hey, in two in, in two months to come, you'll be flying over, so you need to start your process for medical checkups. Sometimes sounds like that's the yeah, only thing you need to get ready yeah, before you, you fly. You need to do the medical checkup, even if you don't know. Uh, let's say a refugee can't know exactly because yeah. UNHCR knows. Mm-hmm. That's why they be like, okay, let's take them to the clinic, whatever, yeah. whatever. Yeah, of course, be. they are, the results are. Seen yeah, they that, they can't so, yeah. tell them like you are leaving next month. No. Oh, why? They, Interesting. W- once everything is ready and clear, uh, yeah. s- what happen is like they just bring the list or they come to you and say, okay, you are leaving tomorrow or next month or next <laughs> week. So that means yeah. I think once they tell you, you, you don't stay in the same place, I bet. No, they they have a, they normally have a location, a specific location okay. where they take them and uh, get them ready, uh, get all the vaccination, mm-hmm. um, 
the malaria uh, vaccination, I, I believe they give them some pills yeah. uh, before they fly. Mm -hmm. um, so once they are ready, once you are on that spe specific location, it's like you already have a day and time you are leaving. Okay, exactly. Because mm -hmm. it sounds like now you like you in a in yeah, a deep yeah, yeah. care of this. Like you, you, like, you, know? you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like you no longer a refugee in that specific country. It's like someone already gave you a chance. Like you are ready to go and live somewhere else. So okay, now, um, so I think from that point, then, uh, what 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 a travel document do you carry with you? Uh, so once uh, in that process, there are something behind the scene that a refugee doesn't know about. Okay. But behind the scene, before you get the ticket, before mm. you get a ticket to fly to U.S., there are documentation. Uh, like I told you before, the U.S. government has a collaboration with a nine NGO in the U.S. Yes. that helps refugees to come and resettle here. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who we do all the paperwork yeah. uh, with the U.S. CIS. They provide something called an, uh, I-94. Yeah. The I-94, it's a passport given by a U.S. government to a refugee who is coming to U.S., and that I-94 will be count as your passport. So the I-94, in other words, okay, it's just in the form of a question. Does it, um, is it, does the USCIS send it over to the U.S. Embassy in that country? So does the embassy no, no, deliver no, that no, paper no. for it you? Or it just, doesn't work with the uh, embassies. This okay. is between USCIS and uh, UNHCR. Okay, so definitely like the I-94 is delivered to any, UNHCR. There you go. Uh -huh. okay. it, it was made by USCIS. Then they work with the NGOs here in the US mm -hmm. and then send them to uh, IOM. There is a, within UNHCR, there is an included uh, organization called IOM, International yeah. Organization Committee for uh, Migration. Mm -hmm. So that, that, uh, that NGO is the one who does all the process until a refugee gets to the airport of uh, destination airport. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, that means now, okay, you fly over with 10, uh, with I-94 mm -hmm. to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So let's <laughs> say, <laughs> so, okay, there is, of course, it will be like maybe another day we're going to talk about this maybe with uh, with someone giving us testimonies because yeah, this yeah, is very, yeah. you know, exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, are, we, are because, ki we are kind of yeah. jumping because we can't say we, all the yeah, details. Yeah, we are talking about the processes here. So you get here, you mm -hmm. know. So there is now you guys or this person is in the is in the country already mm -hmm. right so the process now we're going to talk about is like getting settled to the environment right the u.s mm -hmm. united states communities you're around mm -hmm. with and how do you get settled how where do you go when you land to the u.s so uh that's that's a good topic but yeah. we we can't say it uh, i mean we can yeah dig deeper all today but in a short word yeah. since before you get to uh like you before you get admitted it's mm -hmm. because there is a, an agency that will help you through all that process of resettlement when okay. you get here there is an agency that will help your family to get a job to get a house uh, be, because even before you leave your country to come to us there is an apartment ready for you Oh, or, may, or maybe so a hotel. A, a house or hotel is rented for you. Yeah, rented yeah, for yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Depends dang, on okay. how how many <laughs> okay. how many household in your in your family. Someone will be jealous back there, man. Oh man, I know the the green card holder will be jealous. <laughs> of course, man, because like there's no hustle in getting settled here. Oh no, no, there's no hustle at all. Yeah. The hustle it's over there, but here yeah. everything is ready but, to go. But I think anyway, by at the end of the day, you know, I think you've hustled enough, you know. Uh, I so think, I that think they, they want to. You remove deserve that. all this when you get here because it's mm -hmm. a long process, and also it, you know we should luck because like you know. Not everyone get the same chance, I bet. Yeah, everything is ready. You have your apartment. You have everything. You have uh, you uh, Medicaid. You have your uh, food stamp. You have like everything, like a basic life. 
you have a basic life until you get your job and then uh, survive yourself. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about uh, refugee learning in the specific U.S., but we already understood how uh, UNHCR just delivers refugees mm-hmm. on different countries, but we we were very specific on the United States uh, of America. Mm-hmm. So, uh, would you just give us like few hints maybe before we just close our topic of today about the because now this this refugee person landed in the US mm. and we also have an, a, a person from the same country who came to the US but he's now an asylum seeker. Just mm-hmm. give us some hints before we close. Uh, so basically here, there's no hints. Uh, the thing is... Little information <laughs> about it. What's the difference type? Uh, yeah. The difference is when, when you are coming on your own ticket, your own money, mm-hmm. you buy the ticket on your own. You apply the visa to come to US for yes. your own reason. Yes. You are very different from that refugee yes. who who's going to fly using his I-94 because U.S. government mm-hmm. has accept the uh, his status already. Before as he Egypt, arrived. Before even he arrived in the U.S. Yeah. But for the asylum seeker, he's going to come to U.S. on his own. U.S. government doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Maybe you are traveling in the U.S. with a... Uh, maybe a B2 visa or maybe, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know which kind of visa you might have. You use your legitimate way to come to the US at first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's too different. uh, That's uh, that's the only difference. Yeah, there is um, uh, uh, a court um, rescue uh, website, rescue.org. It's an article talking about the asylum seekers. It's just a form of protection granted for individuals who can demonstrate unable or unwilling to return to their countries because of fearing persecution mm-hmm. uh, in a form of, let's say, there are like a couple of counts they uh, talk about, which is race, religion, nationality, membership of particular social group, or political opinions. Basically, they are trying to say, hey, these are the persons who who would seek an asylum to stay in this country. They came in different way, you know, mm-hmm. but now they want to stay because they are afraid. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, and before we get to the asylum seekers, uh, I want to inform you of this. Uh, until, I mean, uh, starting 1980, that's when the U.S. government has uh, started, uh, resettled refugees in this country. And then uh, in 2019, uh, the global resettlement here in the U.S. has uh, uh, a number of one person in every 500 refugees worldwide were resettled globally. That means uh, within 500 refugees, one was one here. One person was in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So that's you, you need to take that. And then uh, there is a, a number, a big number of refugees here in the U.S. Uh, I would say maybe the top three countries that come here, uh, there is the Syrian people. Syrian uh, refugees, they are more than any other uh, refugees here in the U.S. So that's a big number. A big number. You know. And then number two, there is a, a Democratic Republic of Congo. Those, uh, uh, those, uh, uh, I mean, they're on the second, uh, second level. And then we have Neymar, uh, they are on our number three. Those are three countries, uh, top three countries that have many refugees here in the U.S. So if I may ask you, so now when we already understood the first three or two countries, they are not even one of the Latin Americas or South Americans. Mm-hmm. Why every time... Uh, we hear about uh, refugee cases in the United States Parliament. Mm-hmm. Uh, why do they always bring these cases about Latin America? Because I don't think now they are talking about their big numbers in the U.S. Uh, the 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 main reason here is because here we are talking about legal immigration. Mm-hmm. Uh, the legal immigration here it's the one they have in a database. Okay. Uh, but when you say illegal immigration, it's illegal. You don't have a specific <laughs> number. But okay. when you have these, uh, all these countries across the U.S., specifically South uh, South America country, mm-hmm. many many Hispanic and Latino they're coming here to get to seek a better life. They just across. They cross the border. Just mm-hmm. they. Mm-hmm. Sn- I may use the maybe it's not accurate, but like you know, try to sneak in the country, which is just like 
whichever way I could get in the country. It's like Rwanda, mm-hmm. Rwandan crossing to Burundi or Burundian crossing to Rwanda without any document. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those, those cases are, are more like there are a lot here in the U.S. There are a lot of illegal immigrants here in the U.S. But at the same time, uh, here we are talking about... Um, now the legal immigration yeah the, the legal immigration and illegal immigration yeah, that's because, normal in the u.s because uh let's say in 2020 when uh, donald trump wanted to make a reform about their mm-hmm. about their refugee resettlement but of course they didn't vote for that but basically most of the cases was just like hey, i think we have already resettled enough refugees he was just generalizing mm-hmm. but but the most uh uh, senators who were just backing his opinion or just like referring to South America. So that was the case. But I personally thought South American countries were having big numbers of refugees in this country. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But we, uh, when you say um, South America has a lot of uh, uh, countries and everybody, mm-hmm. uh, many of them want to seek a better life in the U.S. Uh, and that's the main reason and it touched political issues and that's that's when you will see like all this uh, um, Congress stand up talking about this issue to make sure that uh, there's a there is a good relationship between those countries but when you go to the numbers Latin American and Caribbean they're only three percent of legal immigration here because uh, there, there's numbers there I mean within 30 thousand refugees were resettled in 2019 mm-hmm. only 3% were yeah, well, latin americans and caribbean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. african were 54 and then 9 uh, 9% was uh, uh east and south asia and then asia was 17% and europe was 17% yeah still they are receiving huge numbers from mm-hmm. africa uh continentally but yeah. uh, when it comes to like an uh, individual or single country syria comes first syria comes first yeah that's mm. that's cool that's that's right all right so uh, i think uh based on what we're having i think we've just uh hit on many points about this kind of topic mm-hmm. and uh, this kind of process of arriving to the uh, United and, States. Uh, yeah, and uh, and this is legal. Let, let's remind people, this people, is legal. People, they should know this is legal because mm-hmm. it involves governments and United Nations for That's refugee right. agents, which is UNHCR. And all information that we are providing here, you can still find it on UNHCR website or even on USCIS. There are a lot of information that you can get that we cannot uh, share with you right now because uh, we don't have enough time and then i want to invite you if you feel like there's something that uh, we jump on or maybe that's something that we forget yeah please put in a comment yeah hit that idea in the comment below yeah yeah because we we can uh, remember everything of course and with Mm -hmm. this just like you know a short session we're just having we just pinpoint critical points on the process Uh uh-huh before we hit there i know that many people we need to know those nine NGO in the U.S. that help refugee to get resettled before we go to asylum seeker. We mm-hmm. have a, ch- um, a, a church world service. Church, church world service. Yeah, that's number one. Uh, they help uh, refugees around the U.S. to get resettled. Another one, it's world relief. I, I think everybody knows about world, world relief. relief. It, was it a word relief or Catholic relief? Uh, uh, it's oh. it's called word relief <laughs> okay. uh, uh, by the name. Another one called Hires. Another one it's an international rescue committee. So, um, international uh, international rescue committee is it um, the okay? Maybe for all of the nine agencies, mm-hmm. can you approach them personally? Uh, when you are here, once you are here with your paper as a refugee, mm-hmm. you can move to any state you want and seek their help. It's okay. still fine. You so can go to any state and once you get there, uh, I think they can help some you. people, they don't know about this, but it's very critical. I didn't know that either. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's possible. You can go there, and once you know the name, it's good. That's why we are giving the name in case you feel like okay, I have listened about this name. So there is another uh, one called United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Another one, it's a U.S. Committee for Refugee and Immigrant. Another one, it's Episcopal Migration Ministries. 
another one it's ethiopian community development council and then the last one lutheran immigration and refugee services wow so if if you didn't hear any <laughs> Uh, agency that uh, help you to get settled in your city that means they, they work under these ones yeah so that means I think you can yeah. also still uh, look them up on the internet and see no, no, what no, they, the details they or anything they all, have yeah. all these others work under this big nine okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's very interesting yes all right guys I think that's what we're having tonight any point you want to hear before maybe we hit Mm-hmm. our ending session and then our, our next part or a second part on refugees we will be touched based on uh, uh, re- asylum uh, asylum seekers uh, how they get their um, uh, asylum how they get here that's what we're going to talk on our uh, part two of this uh, uh, refugee resettlement because uh, we didn't give you enough information about it but uh, yeah. this this going to be uh, the part one and then part two get ready for those who just come to US with their own ticket with your money or and, probably you're fleeing politically and you get scared of returning back yeah it's, there, it's, there's it's, a many it's reasons legal. it's 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 very positive mm-hmm, to just mm-hmm. it's not only in the u.s even in somewhere yeah, else you may feel yeah like, yeah there's I many think, reasons yeah my life will be in danger in if danger I return, if i return yeah. or maybe there is a reason why i don't want to come or maybe i want to do the business yeah there's a uh, many reasons that u.s we agree and accept because of uh, their interest as well so uh, keep uh, like our videos and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and please make sure that you are putting your comment if you feel like there is something that we need to share but the part two is coming soon Jado, uh, what, what else did we forget or what, what else do you <laughs> want to ask <laughs> i think we maybe we may have forget or we may have forgotten enough but i mean a lot but i think what we have given tonight was very good crucial information and you guys we thank you very much for the your comments and uh your subscriptions and your likes on the views and your comments you're giving us like we are just reading them uh guys they are very good insights i think as episodes gonna keep coming we are going to talk about them you know in upcoming days all right ciao ciao and have a good weekend Thank you.